have inserted the urethral catheter, the Foley catheter. The nurses may call you for one of the following problems. The first problem, they may say, hey, we put a Foley catheter, but there is no urine coming out. So the first thing come to our mind, is there really any kink in the catheter blocking the flow? So we tell them, hey, make sure that there is no kinks in the catheter itself. The second thing is the, is the catheter is a clog by a small block clots here and there. And sometimes you just flush it quickly and that will relieve the blockage and the urine will come out. Although hospitals, some hospitals try to minimize the flushing because they think that may increase the risk of infection. The third thing, uh, we may apply, tell them to apply suprapubic pressure. Maybe that will push the urine out through the catheter. Uh, we talked about flushing the catheter. Flushing the catheter, you may flush the catheter, it goes in and out with some urine. That means we are okay and uh, the um, catheter is functioning well. The other possibility, maybe there is no urine at all. The patient may be in acute renal failure, not making urine or maybe he's dehydrated, or maybe he just voided and there is no urine. And that's when we sometimes use a bladder scan. I'll explain about the bladder scan in a separate video about their uses and limitations. Now, if at any point we concern about the positioning of the catheter, whether if it's sitting in the urinary bladder or not, the quickest way is to get an ultrasound. I mean, CAT scan can work, but ultrasound is cheaper, faster, and safer. That will tell you if the catheter tip is still in the urinary bladder or not. What's easier and faster is just replace the catheter and put a new one. That's when they call us about that there is no urine coming out through the catheter. Now, the second problem they may call you about is intermittent drainage. That the urine comes out sometimes and sometimes there is no urine. Again, we go through the things we just mentioned about not having urine, but that raises also the suspicion of malposition. The catheter is not in the right position. And after you make sure there is no clogging, no kinking, all of that. So simply you may get an ultrasound to confirm the placement of the catheter, or sometimes you call urology and get their advice on that. If at any point the catheter is not in the right position, just pull it out and replace it with a new catheter. The third problem that you may get called about is blood coming through the Foley catheter and the, into the bag. And this is different. This is the catheter, uh, this is the blood coming from the bladder through the catheter into the bag, not from around the catheter. This is what we call hematuria. With hematuria, of course, you have to treat the underlying cause, look for it and treat it, whether a UTI or something else. If there is a blood thinner, you may need to hold it based on the indication of that blood thinner. And you may need to monitor the HNH &H and transfuse as needed. But from practical perspective, you need to watch for clots. I usually tell the nurses, is there any blood clots you could see? And is there urine flowing fine with no problems? If yes, I usually tell them, hey, let's just watch watch it and as soon as you see clots and um, we'll start continuous bladder irrigation or CBI and in CBI or continuous bladder irrigation we use three-way larger French catheters 20 to 24 catheters so we may need to replace the catheter that's in or sometimes we have to use the catheter that's in in some cases the whole reason of CBI or continuous blood irrigation to prevent clogging the catheter and to clear the clots, uh, clear them and evacuate the urinary bladder until the urine becomes clear. And usually when I get to the point of doing CBI or continuous blood irrigation, I call urology as well. At any point, if the catheter is not draining, there is a blood clot clogging the catheter, call urology because they may need to take the patient to the OR and do cystoscopy and evacuate all those blood clots. So if the urine, if the, if the urine is bloody, but it's flowing, no problem, no clots, then we'll monitor that. As soon as you see a blood clot, it's time to start the CBI and call urology. If there is a clogging of the catheter, also call urology immediately for 
that. The next problem you may get called by nurses about is leakage. They will tell you there is a urine coming from around the catheter. And usually, if the patient doesn't have a history of neurogenic bladder or over or hyperactive bladder, usually it's easily fixed by replacing the catheter with a larger French catheter. If you're using a 14 French, tell them to use 16 French. If you're using 16 French, you could use 18 French. Now, if the patient has hyperactive bladder or um, neurogenic bladder, then you may need to play some other games. Maybe you need to restart their anticholinergic medication they use for that. And some, they deflate partially the balloon inside the bladder, and that may fix the problem. Now, with suprapubic catheter, I usually, in practice, call the urologist who place it and give their advice. But in case you don't want to, any suprapubic catheter placed in the last six to eight weeks, please do not touch it and call the urologist for that. Longer than that, I still recommend you call the urologist for that, but you can assume the tract has been created and then you can change the catheter. But please, if you want my advice, call the urologist for any suprapubic catheter trouble shooting and let them handle it, or at least give us the advice for that reason these are the i think most most of the problem you will get called about a fully catheter or suprapubic catheter and how to trouble shoot them